What's going on guys, RBG here bringing you more coverage on Marvel Spider-Man 2. First off, I want to give a big thank you to everyone who tuned in for my previous video reviewing Spider-Man Miles Morales. It did extremely well and you guys really seem to enjoy the breakdown and theory on things we might see in Spider-Man 2. You may have thought that was all there was to cover but we still have more to talk about and dissect so stay tuned. Now before we get started on the video, I gotta give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, TubeBuddy. As a successful YouTube user, I often get questions asking what I use to get my videos tons of views. And the answer to that is TubeBuddy. This thing has helped me take my channel to the next level in ways I never imagined. It's a browser extension that helps new and experienced YouTubers grow fast and optimize their channels. I've been using this extension for years and it's constantly getting updated with new features, like the SEO tool that helps me come up with the perfect title, description, and tags to get more people to click on my videos. It even provides you with analytics besides your videos to see how much traffic your video is generating from various social media sites. The extension is absolutely free, but as a special offer, we're giving a 50% discount for channels that have less than a thousand subscribers that purchase the Pro Upgrade. All you have to do is enter in the code RISINGSTARBUDDY. So if you're interested in starting a YouTube channel or taking your content to the next level, download the extension now. You can do so by clicking on this link that will be provided in the description of this video. But yeah guys, Spider-Man Miles Morales provided us with a hefty amount of clues on what Peter Parker will be up to in Spider-Man 2. Speaking of Miles Morales, Sony just confirmed that both the PS5 and PlayStation 5 version of the game sold extremely well, boasting over 4.1 million units at the end of December. Which is pretty big numbers to boast about, considering the fact that it's a spin-off that's merely half the runtime as the first installment. And it's really no surprise, since Marvel Spider-Man 1 took just under a year to sell over 13 million units, so while it's on likely Miles Morales will get to that number, it shouldn't be too far off when it's all said and done. I think when the PS5 shortages start to let up and the units are more plentiful, Spider-Man Miles Morales will undoubtedly double in sales, because it's just one of those games you absolutely have to experience in its fullest potential, and the best way to do that is on the PlayStation 5. But nonetheless, it's just awesome to see Insomniac taking yet another character who's already popular, but they still managed to inject their own style into him and make him stand out. Also, I just want to briefly address something regarding the title for this game. For whatever reason, there are some of you guys who believe that Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales is in fact Spider-Man 2 and the next installment is going to be Spider-Man 3. But I just want to inform you that shortly after the game was revealed, Sony and Insomniac said that it's not the proper sequel to Spider-Man 2018 Spider-Man game. And they briefly referred to it as an expansion of the first entry before they made a statement saying that it's a standalone spin-off. So hopefully this clears up any confusion on what the next installment will be called. Considering the fact that Peter Parker is the main Spider-Man who kicked off this game verse, it's only right that the game would be called Marvel Spider-Man 2 and not something along the lines of Spider-Man Peter Parker. But anyways, in the last video we talked about which villains would appear in the next game. If you beat the game, you probably saw the post credit stinger pretty much confirming that Harry Osborn will play a prominent role in some form or another in the next installment. I theorize that he'll most likely be a variation of Venom similar to the one from the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon, since Insomniac and the story writers seem to be taking things from that particular lore. They're also taking a ton of inspiration from the Ultimate Spider-Man comics. For example, we get a funny reference to the first time Peter uses his powers to earn money from a wrestling match against Crusher Hogan, and he's wearing the same same homemade costume as the one he wore in the early issues of the Ultimate Spider-Man comics. They even show you a poster of Crusher Hogan which looks identical to that particular run of the comics as well. Another example would obviously have to be Miles Morales himself since he was first introduced into the Ultimate Comic Books universe. Insomniac changes up a few things like picking which parental figure is gonna die and ultimately opting to keep Peter alive while Miles dons the Spider-Man moniker, and they even change the way he's bitten by the radioactive spider. But the source from which that spider comes from is still from Oscorp as it was in the comics. It hasn't necessarily been explained in this universe why Norman Osborn is experimenting with these particular spiders, but I firmly believe that it was similar to the original lore where he's trying to create his own version of a super soldier serum. He ends up creating the Oz formula and injects it into various animals including spiders. And in the first game, one of those spiders jumps into Mary Jane's jacket and it ends up hitching a ride back to the feast shelter where it bites Miles. Apparently it's supposed to be the same kind of spider that bit Peter and gave him his superpowers, but the story writers still haven't confirmed that this spider was also from Oscorp. They just briefly mentioned that he was bitten by a radioactive the spider during a science demonstration. But I think they'll elaborate on that backstory even further in the next installment because it seems like Norman Osborn has his hands tied in a lot of experiments that have severe ramifications that affect Peter and Miles. Besides Harry being awake along with the mysterious symbiote, we see Dr. Kirk Connors who seems to be rid of the lizard or he at least has control over it. 
Apparently he's been helping Norman Osborn create this cure for Harry. And before this bit of information was revealed, I wonder how exactly Norman would be able to find the symbiote. But after seeing that Kurt Connors is involved, I instantly thought back to the Ultimate Spider-Man comics. In that particular run, he manages to get a sample of Peter Parker's blood and he combines it with a leftover sample of the Venom symbiote and his lizard serum to create a red and black symbiote, which we all know as Carnage. In the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon, we get a similar story to that, except instead of Kurt Connors creating the red and black Carnage symbiote, we have Dr. Otto Octavius using Peter's DNA to make the black Venom symbiote at Norman Osborn's behest. So Insomniac is basically using both of those elements to create their own version of the symbiote in this game verse. And if they're going where I think they're going, we could see three users gain the Venom suit. It could start off with Harry Osborn, who's going to obviously be the first host. And then if they go with the route where the symbiote was created with Peter Parker's DNA, it'll ultimately seek him out and bond with him since he's basically the father. And finally we have the most well known user of the Venom suit, Eddie Brock. I know many of you have been wondering if he even exists in this universe, and he indeed does. He's just not mentioned as much as some of the other characters are. But we do get a brief confirmation of him being around through a Daily Bugle farewell card that was given to Peter after he quit working for the company. As you can see, it features signatures from J. Jonah Jameson, Robbie Robertson, Betty Brandt, and last but certainly not least, Eddie Brock. And above his signature he writes, great working with you. So yeah, even though the two are known to be bitter rivals in most of the Spider-Man lore, it's possible that they may have been cool while Peter was still working for the company. But this message could also be him being sarcastic and deep down he hated Peter since he was anti-Spider-Man while Peter was pro-Spider-Man. I can see Eddie Brock making his first official on-screen appearance in Marvel Spider-Man 2 and potentially become the arch nemesis we know him to be. If Insomniac is going down the route of having Peter and Mary Jane Watson move in together and have the symbiote come into play, we could possibly be looking at a story that takes heavy inspirations from Tobey Fallen's run of the Amazing Spider-Man comics, because that's basically the run that first introduced Eddie Brock as Venom. If you're familiar with those issues, you remember Eddie Brock was doing everything he possibly could to make Peter's life a living hell, even if it meant harassing people like Mary Jane. Like this one moment where he meets up with Mary Jane at her and Peter's old apartment on 410 Chelsea Street that's located in Manhattan. And that just so happens to be the same address Insomniac used for Peter's apartment in the first game. Considering the fact that he moved out of that particular location after marrying Mary Jane in the comics, I wouldn't be surprised if they officially tied the night around the time Marvel Spider-Man 2 rolls around. Because if you didn't know, Peter is moving into a new place. During certain conversations in Spider-Man Miles Morales, you get little updates via calls between Peter and Miles. We hear Peter talk about what's going on with him and Mary Jane during their visit in Simcaria. Like in one of the calls, the game alludes to how much more advanced he's going to be in the next Spider-Man game, along with a brief mention of his new home. Stand around taking pictures. <laughs> Sounds like a nice break. As much as a work trip can be. Oh yeah. You feeling refreshed and ready to do some next level spider man -ing. And clean out the gutters in my house. <laughs> Being a homeowner is glamorous, let me tell you. Sounds like it. I'll let you go. Talk soon. And you get another call later confirming that he's moved into Aunt May's home after she passed away in the last game. Miles, hey, do you have a basin wrench? Um, maybe in my dad's stuff. I can check. Yeah, would you? May wouldn't be happy, but I'm going to replace the lime green guest bathroom sink. 76 was a beautiful year, but it's time to move. You need any help? I'm happy to swing out to Queens. So not only does this confirm Peter's new location, it could possibly be a confirmation that we could be getting a new location to swing around in. Because as you heard in the call, Peter's new place of residence is located in Queens, which is where he grew up as a child. We already have Manhattan and East Harlem from Spider-Man Miles Morales, so this is another location that could be added. And we've seen Peter return to his hometown of Queens plenty of times in the comics. Something that's briefly alluded to in another call with him and Miles is that he could possibly take up a new job as a school teacher. I trust you. And I have some stuff I should take care of. Like what? Can I help? I need to find a job. Freelancing with the Bugle was great, but I'd like something steady. Have you thought about teaching? You're pretty good at it. <laughs> Honestly, no. Hmm. No. Maybe. I'll think about it. I'll call you soon. In the 1999 run of the Amazing Spider-Man comics, Peter takes up a job as a high school teacher at his old high school of Midtown High, which just so happens to also be located in Queens. Anyways, Peter was teaching science, and his knowledge and enthusiasm for that particular subject, plus his fun, good-natured temperament made him a pretty great teacher, and it's likely that he would have stayed there for a while. Unfortunately, he had to quit due to the Civil War incident, which sucks because I actually liked him being this smart and hip teacher that occasionally stepped in to stop school shootings. So it would be cool seeing how Insomniac implements that aspect into their story if they even put it in at all. 
Like I'm not saying that this call confirms that he will in fact become a teacher in the next game because for all we know the talk between him and Miles could have been nothing more than a small reference. Whatever they do I'm pretty sure it'll be awesome because they have a talented team of writers and they have a way of picking certain things from the comics and making it work for their story. But anyways let me know what you think about all of this. Do you think we'll finally be able to swing around Queens? And what are your thoughts on Peter possibly becoming a high school teacher? Let me know down in the comments below. As always I asked you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on future videos. But if you really enjoyed the video it would help me out tremendously if you shared it with all your friends and followers on social media. Sharing really makes a difference. But once again this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.